So welcome to Vacation Bible School 2020. Um, we're hosting this panel, you know, to discuss possibilities for BBS during this pandemic, including cancellation, modification, really lots of ideas on um, what this will look like this summer. So we're glad you're here. I think we'll have, um, yes, so we are lifelong learning at Virginia Theological Seminary. This webinar is co-hosted with um, eFormation Learning Community and Building Faith. We come to you every month, um, sometimes more than once a month with webinars to support you and equip you um, in the ministry that you are doing. I think we'll start out with some scripture and prayer as we get started. So if you'll join me in a deep breath, settling into the space that you're in. From Psalm 94. When I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Let us pray. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment and light rises up in darkness for the godly, grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us to do that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices and that in your light we may see light and in your straight path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. So I am... Um, I just got a note to ask us to delay for just another moment. But maybe we can start by introducing who we are. Sorry, I was distracted by that. Me... Yeah, no problem. I think if you advance go. just one more. Yeah, perfect. Here we go. All right. I'll uh, jump in and then Tony and Jason and um, I'll introduce you a little bit. Catherine is, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what your full title is. I am, um, am I on mute? No, okay. I'm the Director of Christian Formation Resources at Virginia Theological Seminary. Awesome, so she will be sort of serving as our back-end host, um, helping to progress the slides, reading your comments in the chats and your questions, making sure our technology is working smoothly. Uh, my name is Sarah Bentley Allred. I am an associate for Christian Formation and Discipleship with Lifelong Learning at VTS. Um, I primarily work with the website Building Faith, and I'm also a part-time children's minister at a local church here in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Um, so really glad to be with y'all today. Um, Tony. Hi, I'm Tony Luke Tyango, and I am the director of uh, Christian Formation at St. James Episcopal Church in Dallas, Texas. I'm also the children's minister on staff here, and I am also married to United Methodist Church Planter and the mother of two, um, so trying to do all of that in the midst of our uh, current situation. And I am uh, Jason Stanley. I am an ordained deacon in the United Methodist Church. I currently serve as the coordinator for church revitalization on the Elizabeth River District in Virginia, which is the beach. Just think beach. That's where I am. Um, prior to that, I served in 20 years of about 20 years in, in ministry with children and youth and their families. So, yeah. So maybe we could start off by each saying a little bit about our A parish context we're connected with and um, kind of what we're thinking about BBS this year, and then we'll we'll get into the content to help y'all think through that. Um, so my parish here, I am a 20 hour a week employee at my parish in children and family ministry. We had been planning to do Grand Friends Camp, which was an intergenerational um, VBS similar uh, program, and that would have used Godly Play as the main piece. Um, so we have officially canceled that as of this week, 
And I decided to put in that cancellation email that we are interested in offering something virtually and that we will be um, talking to parents in mid-June about what's needed. So that's sort of where, where we are. We have decided to cancel and we are still discerning what might be the best resources for parents and families um, in the week that we had scheduled mid-July. So that's sort of where I am. Tony, if you wanna jump in. Sure, uh, like I said, I'm in the Diocese of Dallas. St. James is, uh, has an average Sunday attendance about 180, 200, but we are blessed with a Montessori school on campus. So our VBS pulls in between 150 and 200 kids, the majority of those being ages three through first grade. Um, we have also decided this year to um, cancel our program and have been looking for ways to adapt and reach out to our families virtually and um, maybe, God willing, some in person later this summer. And I worship at a small United Methodist congregation where there's only about nine to 12 kids on a Sunday. Uh, vacation, vacation Bible School was not ever on our calendar, <laughs> uh, but we did start a new ministry that's been meeting monthly, and so we plan to continue to do that uh, in lieu of trying to do anything VBS-like. Awesome. All right, Catherine, I think we can advance to the next slide. So how will we be um, using our time here today? We um, are gonna talk a little bit about why we're doing this webinar, and then uh, Jason, Tony, and I will each spend a few minutes talking about a particular topic. So we're gonna start big picture with the why, and then we're gonna talk about parents and caregivers and how, how we can support them, and then some practical ideas between each of our um, little little sections, there will be an opportunity for questions and we will also have an opportunity for questions at the end. So we will try to get to as many of your questions as possible. At the end, we will have um, tools and resource links and don't feel like you have to write um, those down because you will get a follow-up email that has this recording and all of the links that are there at the end um, on our slide. All right. Are we ready to jump in yet, Catherine? Okay, great. So, so yep. awesome. So why, why have we convened um, this panel? For a lot of folks, Vacation Bible School is a key part of their ministry, if you look at the whole year, and especially the ministry um, done in the summer. There are very particular challenges prevented by this pandemic. And we simply want to open up that conversation and allow people to think through intentionally how they can respond faithfully in these circumstances. So we are not here to tell you what to do, but to help as conversation partners and a sounding board and hopefully to inspire your own creativity. So we will be giving some tips on the decision-making process sharing our experiences and some ideas that we've collected um, from the folks we have talked to and, and what we're thinking about doing in our own context. All right, I think Jason is gonna get us started. Yeah, so um, we're gonna start with thinking about why do we do Vacation Bible School? Um, and I'll just be up front and say, if the reason you're doing Vacation Bible School is because you've always done Vacation Bible School, uh, if that's your first go-to answer, then you gotta, we need to reevaluate why, why, our why there. Catherine, could you uh, go to the next slide real quick? So down here in the, in the bottom corner, you see this circles with the why, how, and what. This is Simon Sinek's golden circle. Simon Sinek wrote a book called um, Start With Why. If you're not familiar with that book, really good. We're going to give you a link to a TED Talk that he did as well. What Simon Sinek found was that most organizations start with what, and then they move to how and why. But his research showed that um, 
if the organizations like Apple, for example, or people like Martin Luther King Jr., when they start with why, they're more influential. There's more success. There's more uh, energy around what is happening and what is, what is going to get, get done. So go, but now we can go back, Catherine, to the other slide. I'm sorry. So the what refers to the products or, or the things that we're providing, right? So what are we, what are we providing? The how is the, <laughs> there we go. The how are our values and our guiding principles and the actions that make organizations stand out where the why defines what the organization stands for. Why really is our purpose? And so we wanted to spend a little bit of time here knowing, knowing the why for Vacation Bible School. Part of that is because when we're faced with an adaptive challenge, like, like, like we currently are, right? Like trying to do Vacation Bible School in a pandemic, it feels adaptive, right? Um, and when change has to take place, we're able to do that with a little bit more ease when we're clear about why we're doing Vacation Bible School, why we're doing what it is that we're doing. Um, you can go to the next one, uh, Catherine, I'm sorry. Because what happens when we're clear about knowing our why, it helps us narrow down and, and provides clarity, not just for ourselves, but for the people with whom we are in ministry with, right? So that we can adapt. Um, if we try to take Vacation Bible School like we've always done it without a clear why and try to then adapt it, it it's going to get kind of crazy. And Vacation Bible School is crazy enough. So, but if we can zone in on why are we, why are we doing what we're doing? What's our purpose behind it? We're then able to adapt it into our context with more ease. So for example, if, if, if our why for Vacation Bible School is to disciple the children within our own context, then maybe doing a backyard Bible school program might not work. But if our why is to provide the gospel to those in our community, to those children and families in our community, then maybe the backyard Bible school idea, which Sarah's going to talk about later, maybe, um, <laughs> may, may work. Does that make sense? I'm asking you, like, you can talk back to me. I'm sorry. Um, so when we're doing this kind of work, whatever our purpose is, when we adapt and we, when we, when we start to rethink it, that's really the place to start. Because we, start with our why, we find our clarity, and then we're able to adapt. One of the things that I would also say uh, when you're doing this is to be clear, just own it. We're adapting, we're changing it out of necessity, we're experimenting, just own it. Just own it and then have fun with it. So we're going to take questions now. All right. That was like the cliff note version. <sighs> So if you have a question already, go ahead and either put it in the chat um, to all panelists and attendees or the Q&A. Um, and if no one has a question yet, don't worry, there will be more time for questions to come. Mm -hmm. um, as you were talking, Jason, I was thinking about how it really matters whether um, your VBS is primarily for your church community or if a lot of other folks in your town or city participate and how that might change what you end up doing, even the platforms you're using. Like, yeah, absolutely. It would, it would be different if you're doing like Zoom, that's kind of an insular, but if you're like posting stuff on your Facebook page that could then get shared super widely, that would maybe reach a different group of people. Absolutely. And even when you think about um, the VBS at home kits that some, some folks have been thinking about, those are easy to distribute to your to people who are already connected to your church. But what does it look like to provide something like that if the broader uh, purpose of Vacation Bible School if the purpose of Vacation Bible School is to reach a broader group of people, then, then what, 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 that, what might that look like? Yeah. So we do, we do have some questions coming in in the chat. So I'm just going to start feeding these to you, Jason. Okay. Um, the first one is a good question for you because I don't want to answer it. 
Um, how do we deal with the issue of justifying our reason to be employed in the church? Oh, merciful heavens. <laughs> Tell your stories. Hmm. Tell your stories. There are ways that you are connecting with families and children. Um, Find ways to tell those stories to your leadership. Find ways to tell those stories online. If it's in a blog, um, emails to your leadership. Find ways to tell your stories. Um, and again, you know, going back to the why of Vacation Bible School and providing some clarity around this is why we're doing what we do. Being able to really communicate that broadly, not just to your, not just to the families of the kids who may be engaged in your vacation Bible school, but to the broader congregation, who so that they may have some ownership as well, and then they see what's happening. The other the other side of that may be, you know, they they may give. <laughs> there may be some uh, generosity that comes from those story stories as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just, cause we have actually a lot popping up already. I'm going to keep going. Um, so some of us mentioned that we'd already canceled our VBS. What dates were we supposed to do that? So that's me and Tony. So my VBS was going to take place the week of July 13 through 17. Tony? Mine was to take place June 8th, um, through the 13th. And we're, we've canceled ours, but we're looking to do something later in July, sometime after the 15th. Awesome. Um, will, we, will there be a transcript, a transcript of the chat? There's already some good info being shared. Um, Catherine, maybe we can save the chat and go through it and pull out some of those resources. We, okay, we will figure out a way um, to do that. It doesn't share in a very pretty form. So it would probably be helpful if we go through um, and look through that for you guys. Okay. Um, if part of our why is to meet a need within the community for a Bible-centric form of affordable child care during the summer, which I know that this is true in a lot of places, what do we do about that? That's tough. Um, you, you know, you got you to gotta keep an eye on uh, what your local governments are saying about um, going back, open, reopening or whatever, uh, however that, that's phrased in your context. The other thing I would say is also, I know for us in Virginia, our bishop's office is putting out some guidelines, so there may be some denominational things uh, that you may be aware of. Um, I, I would, I would um, if, if, if it becomes an opportunity to do it in person, take a uh, take some real significant time in developing a plan for social distancing, making sure you have the volunteers that you need, the, the, the man or woman power you need. Um, and I think there will still be some ways that you will have to adapt in-person Bible school um, based on those guidelines, whatever they may be, you know, whatever they may be. Yeah, maybe there's an opportunity to offer something for a much, much smaller group of people that would still reach your goal. Like, say you could figure out 10, pe 10 young people who could use affordable child care for a week and offer that with three adults. You would still be meeting your goal, but it would be on, a, you know, following all of the guidelines of your diocese, et cetera. It would still be, um, it would be very different. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we have time for one more right now, Catherine, do you think? And then we'll keep moving. But don't worry, we have an eye on the questions that are coming in. Um, so this is a good one for you, Jason. Somebody who just started on April 1st and is wondering, how do you even find out the why from mm -hmm. a congregation? How do you figure out why the congregation is doing it when you're new to a community? First, God bless you. God bless you. Prayers and blessings. Um, I would say one place to start is get with the people who usually plan or are part of that task force or that committee that works on Vacation Bible School and, and just start asking questions like, like, 
what have you been doing? Why, you know, and just keep asking questions and getting them to tell the stories and then just, just ask, what's our, what's our purpose? What's the purpose of, of doing this? Now, it, some churches may have a very clear vision for how they're making disciples or, or mission and vision that's very clear. And so then you would want this ministry to be in alignment with, uh, with that vision. But I would start with the people who have been most involved with Vacation Bible School and get their input and get their um, take on what the purpose is and then say, and just ask that question, is that our purpose this year? Is that our intention? Is that our why? now and going back to what you were saying about stories mm -hmm. if you're having trouble with the very direct question about what is the why maybe asking like can you tell me one of your favorite stories about yeah. cbs and trying to collect some of those and figure out if there's any patterns that that might be a better approach than just going straight in and asking the why question but yeah get them to start telling some stories is always a good way to do it too Absolutely. All right. So we have a lot of really good questions. We're going to keep trucking. And um, hopefully, I think some of these are going to come up as Tony jumps in here. Yes. So um, first, I want to expand a little on my context. I have been a um, in ministry uh, since I was 18 years old. And when I first started in ministry, I truly believed that the kid, the youth person was my focus. Um, and as I grew older and wiser and a little grayer, I began to realize that that was not necessarily the focus of who I was being called to be in ministry with and to. Um, and slowly as I became um, a parent, realized that um, our parents are the ones um, who really are the disciplers of children um, and that they have not been well equipped over the course of uh, Christian history to be um, the primary discipler to their kids. So one of the things I want to focus on is how can you and I as directors of Christian formation and volunteers in VBS and VBS directors, how can we help equip parents to take on this ministry? Um, as I have talked to parents in my context, as I've talked to the school parents and our church families, many of us are not willing yet to risk our children out in the world. No matter what the directives say, no matter what the bishops say, no matter how many masks we put on, we're not yet ready to come out. Um, so how can we allow our parents to feel empowered um, to take that decision and to um, to make VBS for themselves or to make formation their own. Um, and that first step is to encourage them to put on their own face mask. You know, as they say, when you're flying, you know, put your mask on first and then worry about your child's mask. Um, you yourself uh, take the time to connect um, as a believer, take your time to, um, Sit with the word, sit with God, pray, whatever it is that you do to allow yourself to be refreshed in this time of heightened anxiety and additional responsibilities. I've got two school-aged children at home. I'm trying to figure out how to Zoom their classes while I'm trying to Zoom meetings. I'm trying to download Google things. And, you know, it's been a, it's been a challenge and it's um, tiring and it's anxiety building, especially when you continue to see numbers rise in your community. So take the time for yourself. Take the time to breathe and live into that before trying to figure out how to take care of the others. The other thing I would say is fall back on your traditions. Um, every tradition that is up here in this forum right now has um, basic routines just designed as part of their worship that will allow you the opportunity to share the story. Whatever the story of VBS was supposed to be this year, our traditions of prayer, our traditions of scripture reading, they're all items that we can use to help parents to disciple their kids during VBS, during the summer, or during the whole year. And so that might be a way for us to um, not only kind of capture some of the spirit of 
VBS if your why is formation, but it might also be an opportunity for us to explain, encourage, empower our families in their own formation walk as to why they're United Methodists or why they're Episcopalians or why they're whatever denomination you come from. Giving them and equipping them with tools to help um, to help form the journey their children are on and that they're helping to disciple. Catherine, the next screen. So I think probably one of the most important things we've allowed our families to do is to opt out. Um, we had a hundred and something people already registered by the time our pandemic um, shutdown went into effect and Everybody wanted to know right away, what are you going to do? Um, because June 8th is the first full summer for us here in, in Dallas. And one of the first decisions we made was to say, you know what? We don't have the ability at this time to adequately protect 150 small people. Um, I can barely keep two people going right now, let alone 150 people. Um, I can't keep their hands off each other, let alone trying to keep 150 little people's hands off of each other. So opt out if that is an option for you. Make it an option for your families to know that um, you have the best interest of your family to can take into consideration first. And you know your family best. I have a son who has uh, chronic asthma. I would not want him anywhere near this, this disease. So he won't be going out for a long time this summer. <laughs> Sorry, son. Um, but missing one summer won't stunt his growth. One summer of VBS canceled won't stop your ministry. It won't stop your family's growth. It won't stop your church's growth. It won't stop the people around you from hearing the word of God. So give them the opportunity to opt out um, and do it with some grace. Maybe you do it by providing something on your website that they can utilize. Um, later in the summer if they choose to, or maybe it's something that you download um, and have provided for them at church when you begin to worship together again, something that they could take home. Um, and with that in consideration, the last thing I would say is, is if you're equipping your parents for being a primary discipler, if you're equipping them to be the primary formation, focus on the basics. Right? Some of us have had the opportunity to, to spend a lot of time thinking about child development and thinking about resources that are out there and ways to encourage kids to read the Bible and ways to make the Bible fun. And, and parents not necessarily have had that opportunity. So we have to use our resources to give them the tools to be able to tell the stories. Um, you know, something past Noah's Ark or past Jesus on the cross or the empty tomb, giving them the opportunity to share their stories um, of faith, the stories that touch them, the stories of scripture that touch them, the stories of Christian heroes that touch them, um, the saint stories that might speak into their lives. We need to be able to give parents not only permission, but tools to tell those stories. And maybe that's encouraging families once a week um, by posting a book that really speaks to you or a Bible story that really spoke to you along with a color sheet or talking points for a dining room table discussion. Um, but give your parents enough lead time with that so that they can be resourced. If you're going to have a VBS um, and it's going to take crafts and you're not going to have uh, kits made available, make sure that that um, supply list, even if it's just crayons and paper, are put out there well ahead of your jumping on with a video so that parents feel like they're not behind the curve and that we're not increasing their anxiety, but that we're providing for them to start with. And then I would say that once you've provided this lead time and you've given them tools, have them engage, not only just their kids, but their whole family. Get grandma and grandpa in on it. Get you know aunts and uncles in on it. Invite the neighbor to Zoom with you. However best works in your context, invite them at a time that is appropriate for them and in a way that works for their family to share that. Um, I have found that part of VBS that is most energizing to our church is those stories that are shared. 
when the kids get picked up from VBS by their parents and the stories that they're telling their families and the sharing Sundays when they come back and the beginning of the school year when they tell, oh, at VBS, do you remember this? Give them opportunities to engage in those remember wins or I loved this um, with, your with your families. Um, and then give them an opportunity to share it at church as well. Um, maybe display artwork, have them text you artwork and display it on your Facebook page. Have them uh, make a little vlog of what they learned about the Bible story that day and share it on your Facebook group. There are lots of ways that we can engage our families to be the disciplers and empower them to share that message with others. Um, and hopefully, you know, together we can continue to encourage our parents after this pandemic is over to be formation leaders of their own. Questions? Catherine, were there any that you saw scroll by that we want to start with? I think a big one was, could you tell us just the top factors, Tony, that helped you to make your decision to cancel? Um, because that's, that's something that people are wondering about, like, how do you make this decision? Um, those of you on the panel who said that you're canceling, said that yours is occurring early in the summer. Um, some folks don't have it until late in July and they're wondering when the time comes for me to make that decision, how do I make that decision? So uh, one of the main reasons we canceled ours was that it is very early in the summer. Um, it is the tradition in our church to kind of start off summer with the big VBS. Um, and then we have smaller um, programs that we offer throughout the summer. Um, but because it was so early and because we had no directive from our bishop yet as to what summer formation would look like, we went ahead and said, okay, there's no way 150 kids can be safely taken care of here. Um, that said, we also considered um, just child development in nature of pandemic. You know, it's very difficult to keep kids six feet away from each other um, without some kind of crazy hat or marking up the church grounds in some way. Um, so even with what we knew at the time um, that we made the decision, the difficulty level of that many kiddos in one location, um, trying to keep them all safe and sanitized and masked just didn't seem um, to be a workable solution. We are looking at doing something later in the, in the summer, something bigger later in the summer so that we can, um, we can hit our why of making lifelong um, disciples and providing them with this experience. Um, but at the time that was, the factor was the number of kids and how early we were in the year in the summer. So you were well, definitely thinking about the, um, the health of the students, you were thinking about the guidelines from the government at this time, you were thinking about your bishop's uh, guidelines, there weren't any yet at that point, um, other than not to gather for worship and things like that, right? right. That is correct. Um, at the time that we made the decision, mid of the middle of June was the earliest we knew churches were going to be back. Um, that was the, the news kind of that had spread. Um, and, you know, that was back at, you know, 25% capacity kind of idea. And how do you choose which 25% of your population can come to your VBS? So, so I'll add on to that. Some of, so my VBS was scheduled for mid-July. Um, and some of the factors that, that really informed the decision, other than what Tony said, because all of that was part of it, but other factors included um, a lot of our volunteers. Um, I was pretty sure that they would not be available either because of being very high risk and therefore not feeling comfortable coming to VBS even in mid-July if some things had opened or because they would be absolutely exhausted as parents having been crisis schooling during a pandemic. And so I was worried that my volunteer base wouldn't be there. Secondly, the toll of working under these conditions on me personally, I had lost about six weeks of planning that I was going to use to put things sort of in order 
for VBS. So that was gone. So looking at then having to ramp up really quickly and not knowing about my volunteer capacity. So those were two other factors that really informed my decision as well as um, what I had been reading in terms of the necessity of really good testing and continued social distancing months out. So those were some of the factors. Um, also, I'm seeing a lot of resource specific questions coming up in the chat. That is definitely the next part of this. Any other things, Catherine, that you wanted to make sure Tony, okay, we're gonna keep scrolling in and we might come back to you, Tony. Thank you. Okay, so um, a few practical considerations. Um, as Tony said, giving families the opportunity to opt out, we feel like that's really important to be able to say, if you are just totally stressed and overwhelmed and faith at home resources are not what you need right now, you don't have to participate in our VBS this year. Your kid will be okay. Um, we, as we were discussing, the four of us were discussing this panel, we want to make sure to say to you, you also have the permission to opt out. If providing a digital v VBS is not what your community needs most this summer, um, your congregation will absolutely survive one missed year of VBS. Um, somebody was saying in the comments a while back that they missed a year due to building construction and the next year they had a very vibrant VBS. Um, so then context, context, context. Um, I can't emphasize enough. This matters so much. As the different things are scrolling by, I'm seeing that people are just in vastly different spaces in terms of what is the VBS tradition at your church? You know, what is the why of it? Is it a sacred cow? Like just different things. Have you not done one in a couple of years? So it won't be a big deal to miss a year. There's a lot of different things to consider in terms of your, your VBS. Does the most important part of it translate well online or not? Then size. Size really matters in this congregation in terms of small churches are very, very flexible and nimble. Bigger churches who have up to 400 plus kids attending their VBS, it is much more difficult to be nimble in that situation. It might be very hard to provide, for example, take home bags or packets for 400 households. Whereas a small church with say 10 households that usually participate in um, VBS, that might be a feasible thing for them to do. Resources, financial, but also people. And I think people perhaps is the more important one. Um, Again, assessing the why and assessing is, is your time best spent in preparing a virtual VBS or is it best spent in other ways? And then also the virus hotspots. Some places are simply more risky for doing things in person than other places. Um, so we absolutely recommend that you Pay very close attention to your bishop's guidance, the guidance of your local health department and being in touch with them. Um, so a third practical consideration is surveying your folks. And I've seen um, in the comments that a lot of people have already started doing this. I think that's fantastic. Somebody was saying that they asked for 10 minutes of time from three families and the parents just talked and talked for 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so some things to, you know, ask about are both parents working and therefore it would be difficult for them to help their kids engage in something live during the day. How much screen fatigue are people experiencing in their families? Would they prefer to have things that are not screen related? Um, do they have year round school? In my area, there is year round school. Um, so, so that's something to consider. This may or may not be something that people need because who knows when school is going to cancel in our area. So those are some practical things to consider as you're discerning about this. All right. So to some of the practical ideas, and we've seen such wonderful ideas here in the chat, we will definitely um, make every effort to save those great ideas. Um, 
So I think first and foremost, what I'm hearing is that people want you, the person that they have a relationship with. So the people at Tony's church are interested in connecting with her. And so that's something to consider when, when figuring out how to do something like VBS virtually, how are you going to maintain that personal connection with people? In a smaller church, that could look like a handwritten note to the folks that are going to participate from you saying how excited you are that they're going to participate. In a larger context, that might look like you being on videos or on Zoom calls or um, setting up a whole Facebook group so that people can interact with you personally. But that relationship is important when we are in person and it is just as important now that we are moving online. Secondly, I think there's a ton of options for the materials and it's important to discern around what works best for your context. Um, so at first I was really thinking that Zoom was gonna be the way to go for me, for VB, for virtual VBS, because we've been doing um, Godly Play via Zoom on Sunday mornings and it's been incredibly successful and people are really engaged and loving it. The longer we've been in this pandemic, I'm realizing that there's no way that parents want to be on a Zoom with me for five days in a row. Like that's just not a good idea. And I'm realizing how much effort Zoom actually takes for me. So um, yeah, having to be on Zoom every day for five days with a bunch of kids would take a lot of effort. So I'm looking at the video idea. Might premiere the video on YouTube so that there could be a live chat. Um, and then also it will be available for folks who are working and want to do this on the weekend, or as Tony was saying, later in the summer, they want to engage with this material. Um, there's been a lot of talk about take-home packets. I think that could look a number of different ways. Um, downloads are a great option. Um, in terms of like sending home materials, um, that is a very con context specific decision that folks are gonna have to make. In my context, I think we could probably do that in a low risk way. Um, we can, I've actually, I'm going to be sending some home some Godly Play response material bags. And what I'm planning to do is wash my hands. The materials have been sent to my house from Michael's. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to pack the bags. I'm going to put them in my trunk and I'm going to leave them for about a week. I'm going to drive my car to the church, pop my trunk, get a chair, sit about six feet away. People are going to come up and take them out of my trunk. So they won't have been touched for a week. And then I will, you know, be very clear with people how I have packed them. I will tell people, you know, wash your hands, et cetera. So that's, I think that that's one, one option, but definitely context specific. Um, another option is a small group model. This could look a lot of different ways. In my context, we've been talking about putting households into triads. So we don't think in my context that we will be going back to church for quite, quite some time. And so we're thinking about having families that are interested be part of a discipleship triad and encouraging them to check in with each other once a week um, any way they want. If they want to use Zoom, that's great. If they want to do um, Marco Polo or just text each other, but to journey along with each other. Um, so I can imagine them getting together having a packet and some materials and doing a backyard VBS if we're able to set up our triads. And that way also it can be something where folks who feel comfortable opting in, opt in. Those who are not comfortable, they don't have to do it. Um, so letting people take the risks that they are comfortable with. So then um, another idea, there's been some really creative things done um, on church campuses. So if you are luck privileged enough to have a beautiful church campus, is there a way that you could involve folks? Also, again, contextual, do people live close enough to the church to make this reasonable? So one idea is um, you could set up a scavenger hunt at your church and send it out you know, in an email or a PDF and then have people throughout the week, whenever it suits them, go to the church and participate in that scavenger hunt. 
Um, you could encourage folks throughout the week to decorate parking spots with chalk. And then at the end of the, you know, along your theme, for example, and then at the end of the week, you can invite the whole community to drive through the parking lot and look at those decorations. Um, if we go to the next slide. So lastly, um, I would encourage us to put some thought into ending well. This is something that we try to do when we do an in-person VBS is figure out what does it look like for us to wrap up this experience well and share it with our wider congregation. So definitely think through how you're going to do that with your virtual VBS. You might, um, for example, have most of the week things take place at people's homes with videos or just take home download packet stuff. But then at the end of the week on Friday evening, come together for a worship service that is specific to those who have been participating or for a potluck on Zoom. Um, there's a camp and I'm not now remembering where that did a virtual campfire. And I thought that was so creative and lovely. It looked like a lot of fun. Um, you could try to do a collaborative art project, one that um, I had thought of doing for Pentecost, it's not going to happen, but it would have been cool, is sending folks um, a few pieces of origami paper and the instructions for making a paper crane, and then having a bucket outside the church where everybody put their cranes in and stringing them up into a mobile, so that we would have a crane from all the different households in the mobile. So if it makes sense for your context, could you create something separately that then comes together and is shared out? You might invite people to participate in a service project. Um, it could be creation centered, cleaning up a certain area. It could be, um, I know some churches are still doing food drives or feeding programs. So it could be contributing to something like that. So inviting people, you know, on this Saturday to drop things off for that. Um, somehow creating a prayer wall. I know some churches have big chalkboards. If you were able to put one outside and invite people to come to your church, or there's a lot of ways to do this. It didn't have to be a chalkboard, but to create a prayer space somewhere outside the church where people could come and put prayers throughout the week. Um, you could invite people to take pictures of themselves participating in the VBS activities and send them to you and make a slideshow that could go out to the congregation or close down the week with a parade. So if there were some folks who were willing to stand in the church parking lot with signs six feet apart and have families drive through and wave. Um, so those are just a few kind of practical ideas. I'm sure there's a ton floating through the chat. One thing I did see about singing um, and I'll just share my personal experience and then Catherine, Jason, Tony, if you have other singing experience. Um, so when I've been doing the Godly Play Zoom, what I have done is put up a slide with the words of a song and then I put everybody on mute and I sing to them and they are singing back, but I can't hear them. And the thing that I found is that it works best when the song has motion because I can tell that the kids are participating. So one that we do a lot is go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. And I can tell that the kids are really engaged because of their motions. Um, so it doesn't feel quite so lonely to be singing to myself. <laughs> So we'll take Jason or Tony, if you want to jump in on other singing ideas, and then Catherine, maybe you can feed us some more questions. Yeah, I was going to echo the movement thing. You, you, anything that, that allows them to have some type of movement. And the other thing I was thinking about was Cokesbury Lifeway group. A bunch of them are, are transitioning some of their materials into virtual materials. And I don't know the answer, but I'm wondering if some of the music videos that they put together will be available for you all to use so that you could do something similar to what Sarah was just uh, talking about. Yes, we have used uh, YouTube links um, and shared YouTube links um, of past VBS songs um, when we've done our online Sunday school. 
um, I haven't, I hadn't thought to mute everybody. Um, I actually like the uh, joyful noise kind of <laughs> aspect of it. Um, and it helps kind of just liven up the space uh, for myself. But uh, we've been using the, the YouTube videos and encouraging kids to dance um, and do the hand motions to the songs um, that we, you know, would use at VBS. And if we do an online platform um, of any kind, we'll include that because that opening time and that closing time for our family or for our kiddos is so special and they love it. They might even get more out of it that time at that time than any other time. Um, but yeah, definitely encourage uh, hand motions and dancing. So I just saw a question that I meant to type an answer to and I accidentally hit answer live. So <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, jump in with this and then Catherine, you can feed us some more. So um, Allison says that they are considering a weekly activity instead of one week of VBS. Um, which I think a number of folks in the chat said they were also considering and they are looking for ideas. So I would say a lot of these VBSs could be used that way. Um, two different things that I've heard of recently. Um, one, Illustrated Ministries, and we have a link to that that will come out, um, is doing Compassion Camp. And that is five sessions. And I definitely think that that could be used for five weeks. Another option is the resources from the way of love. Um, I think there's some good curriculum around that. And if you did one practice of the way of love a week, tell me if I'm wrong, Catherine, there are seven practices. So, and a lot of them could be spread out for multiple weeks. So I would probably look into way of love, maybe illustrated ministries anybody else want to tap into doing something once a week? Yeah, that's actually, um, I can't remember if it was um, Grow Ministries or Lifeway, um, but there are links to various resources from each of them in the resource section of the slides, um, and you'll get that in the emails as well. Um, they actually suggested that, that that might be an option to use whatever you had already planned to do for VBS and um, offer that one day a week um, or offer things that are asynchronous. So put together videos that folks can access on YouTube um, themselves at a time that works for their family because the same time doesn't always work for everyone, especially in this strange time. Um, so that is an option. Um, folks were asking about, uh, can you say more about how to organize backyard VBS? I'll start out by saying what I was envisioning was um, very, um, how should I say this, congregant led. So what I was envisioning is asking people if they wanted to participate in something like a backyard VBS group with two other families and then putting it on them to come up with a time that would work for them. And I would provide, for example, a video for them to watch together. Um, in our circumstance, it would probably be like one or two godly place videos of godly play stories that I would tell and then provide things like um, a craft, an activity, one or two games that they could play as a as a group so that's what i was thinking um yeah but tony also has thought through some of this so hop in so yes so that's one of the options that we're looking at is doing some backyard or small group uh vbs ministries and offering um instead of a whole week of vbs maybe you do two to three nights of VBS in someone's backyard or two to three mornings, because um, we have to take heat into consideration in Dallas. Um, but how, you know, how do you decide who goes to where? Um, and so one of the things that we're putting together right now is a survey for our families of their interests. Are you interested in being on a Zoom um, VBS for a week? I'm not interested in teaching that, but maybe, you know, maybe that is what our families want. Um, are you interested in the small group idea? Um, and then one of the things that we've been thinking through is partnering with some of our other churches to coordinate 
um, a backyard VBS so that we would have two to three churches across the diocese offering backyard VBS. You would um, then divide up those households into different volunteers' backyards. So we're looking at minimum numbers of kids. You're looking at seven kids to three adults, basically. So, you know, depending on your context, how many backyards are you going to need? So that's why we were thinking, you know, share that across churches um, so that you can get more backyards involved and more volunteers. And then the resource officers in those churches, uh, the formation leaders, whatever, would be, a, be the ones to provide the materials, just as Sarah said. Um, we're also looking at doing small groups here on campus. Um, and trying to, to use our outdoor spaces creatively so that we could have multiple groups going on at the same time, but still maintain that social distancing. Um, and some of the things that we're looking at is how, how do you break those into small enough groups to keep safe, but also to honor um, all of the people who want to participate and protect the volunteers as well. Um, and at some point it becomes volunteer fatigue that you have to consider. Um, and so we're starting with the survey and coming up with a couple of times that work for the volunteers that are already on board. Um, and then looking at other volunteers to see if, um, if they have ideas or resources they would like to offer, like helping put together bags of materials or you know, uploading videos or whatever their gifts are. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, why don't we, we try to be very careful about keeping our, our webinars to an hour. So let's move to the resources and then I'm okay with us circling back for a few more questions um, for, and we'll run over by a few minutes, but not for long. Um, but that way folks can see the kind of resources that they'll receive and just to, um, so that if you have to jump off, you can go ahead and do that and not feel like you missed a whole lot. Um, so you'll see here um, on the resources slide that we have um, the COVID-19 updates from group publishing. We have the Compassion Camp, um, release information from Illustrated Ministry, um, some things from the from Orange Kids and Cokesbury. We also have the, um, someone was asking in the chat about Bolt. Um, I've not used that one, but it is also on our next slide of resources. And then if you want to um, know more about the Golden Circle, we have included a TED talk about the golden circle, figuring out your why to help you determine what to do moving forward um, and some information about that. Um, and then we did wanna just tell you that we have another webinar coming up um, next month, or actually it's two weeks from today. Um, and Sarah will be here as, again um, with her colleague, Keith Anderson. They'll be talking about reflections and resources for the summer. Um, we also have a, um, we'll have additional webinars um, coming up later in the summer. And then we have a eFormation, which is an online conference about digital ministry. Um, and that's something that our department has been offering for more than six years. Um, but I'm anticipating that there will be um, a good number of folks who are interested in learning more about that, especially this year. Um, so I included that there. Um, we also wanted to make sure that you all know that we offer open office hours every Thursday afternoon, 1.15 to 2.45, and that's a place where you can pop on and ask questions. A lot of times it is um, Sarah Bentley Allred um, there, and she's a great conversation partner, so is um, Joy, she's um, one of the students who goes to VTS and works with us, um, and they'll help you talk through brainstorm things and, um, and process kind of ideas for, for moving forward. Um, we also have right now digital ministry office hours. Um, so you'll see that that information is included in the slides and just a thank you. So going back to questions, um, let's see. So, some so someone, someone asked if I could redo the motions. To yes, go please, now and I wanted to ask you that. <laughs> okay, so if you mute yourself, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to sing to you guys. Okay, so this is the way it goes. All right. Go now in peace, go now in peace. 
May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. And we usually sing it two or three times. And this was recorded, so you can go back and look at it. Other questions, Catherine, you saw Perfect. that we Thank you. Um, folks have asked about, um, what about students who don't have as easy access to the internet and um, things like that? How do you handle that in your context? Anybody wanna jump in on that? So we have this context in my husband's church. Like I said, I am married to a United Methodist church planter and we have a Hispanic congregation where a majority of those families do not have ready access to um, laptops, computers, and internet in their homes. Um, and one of the ways that we are handling it, because it is a smaller community, is that we will be offering them um, a once a week kind of kids club experience where they will come and we have partnered with um, two other small churches to provide meals. Um, and that's what their VBS families are gonna do is they're gonna prepare meals to feed this group of kiddos. Um, and we're going to um, learn how to use all of our social distancing manners and mask manners and um, hand washing and do VBS um, in an outdoor tent in, in that area of town. Absolutely, that's great. Um, we had a question. Oh, go ahead, Jason, jump in. I was just saying that's a fantastic idea. And, and I was also thinking the Backyard Bible School could also be an option in those, um, in those particular areas as well, the low tech. Awesome. Um, we did have someone ask about one of our previous webinars. Um, those are available on the Building Faith website, um, but I'll also, because that one was on children's literature, and I know that a lot of folks are using that to supplement their um, children's ministry right now, I'll add that link to the resources page so that um, folks can find that easily. Um, we also had some questions about um, having parents online with a live, um, with an online program. Um, and those are great questions. Do you all have um, thoughts that you wanna offer? So one thing that Building Faith is working on um, soon this week, next week, um, is some sort of like, does your church have guidelines for online events and community? And so um, I think that is a great thing to bring up when you are inviting folks to be part of a virtual um, experience, being clear about what that looks like. So in my context, we do virtual VBS. We have a lot of parents that are there in the frame engaged, um, but we are basically keeping to what we would have done in person, which is having two trained safeguard God's children um, equipped folks in the non-parents in the Zoom meeting as the adults there. Um, and we put some other sort of Zoom safety measures in place. Um, and we, I think we have a lot of resources on those type of Zoom safety measures through lifelong learning. That's yes. a really great question. Yes, um, our colleague Sarah Stonecipher, our digital missioner, um, has created a video about um, safeguarding folks um, that I will also put in the resources to, um, to help equip folks. Let's see, um, any other questions that folks need? Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Are there any other questions that anyone wants to pop in the chat? I think folks are finishing up. I would just say, please join us if you have other questions. This is a really big conversation and it's honestly not something that can take place fully in one hour, <laughs> especially with the number of folks we had on today, which is delightful. So I would just say, please be in touch with us. Um, and the, the four of us are available and we also have those open office hours and we would be very happy to talk more specifically about your context.
So yeah, I think that's all yes. special. Thanks to Jason and Tony for joining us and sharing your gifts. We really appreciate that. Yes, thank you all so much. And I saw that someone just popped on because of the time difference. They they um, missed us at the beginning. Don't worry, you will receive. Um, it takes me about a day to get everything into a Mailchimp and everything, um, but probably by the close of business tomorrow, you should receive an email that will have the recording of this. It will have our slides and it will also have all of those resources linked for you so you can just click and you can easily forward it so thank you all so much friends tony jason sarah thank you for sharing your wisdom with us we're really grateful have catherine a make sure to make sure to save the chat yes we'll do before we move off yeah <laughs> thanks go in peace all right thanks be to god bye everybody everyone